All right, sigma notation and convergent series and sum to infinity. So, sigma notation, when we look at adding a sequence, there's a difference and more mathematical way of writing it. Okay, so when we're adding a sequence, we always, we have that series sequence that we write down, but when you actually get further along in math and higher level math courses, we're going to write it a little bit differently. So if we consider this sequence here, so we've got u1, u2, u3, and so on, all the way up to un, the series of that would be this, u1 plus u2, blah, 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 blah. The more mathematical way of writing this is using the Greek letter sigma. Now this means the sum of the values. And you notice we've got i equals 1 and the n up here. The i equals 1 part is telling us what number we're starting at. So here we're starting at the first term and going to the nth term. If i didn't equal 1, it was just telling you what term to start at and then add up all the values after that term up until value n. Okay, so this notation is the sum of the first n terms because i equals 1. So this would read the sum of all of the terms ui from i equals 1 to i equals n. So consider the following arithmetic sequence, 2, 6, 10, 14. It has a starting value of 2 and a com common difference of 4. We can write this as, in a general form of un equals 4n minus 2. We could also write this in sigma notation as something like this. So we're going to write our Greek letter. We have i equals 1. And then if we wanted to go up until n, we would put n at the top, and then 4. Now, typically you're going to put um, your value i down here, minus 2. You're also sometimes going to see it written like this, where we've got our sigma notation, and you've got n equals 1, and then s can go at the top, so you'd have 4n minus 2, where that s is your last number. Okay, so those are kind of other things that we're looking at. So this is reading the sum of all of the terms of 4n minus 2 from i equals 1 to i equals n. We're looking at the first sigma notation I wrote there. Now, if I just wanted to calculate the first couple terms, it's a little easier to write. But like, let's say I wanted to calculate all the terms in this sequence. It would be impossible because it would just keep going. But when we're writing this, what this tells us to do, I'll put it again, uh, 4i minus 2. So we're going to have this equals 4 times 1 minus 2 plus 4 times 2 minus 2 plus 4 times 3 minus 2 all the way to 4 so let's throw a plus in there and a plus in there all the way to 4n minus 2 okay so it's telling us to do that addition keep adding up all of those terms. It's a little bit more tedious to write that out at the end, but this is a more accurate way of writing it when we get to higher level math. So if we were doing this expression, for instance, if I said um, to write this out, so write the expression as a sum of terms and then calculate it. What we're gonna do is just going to go one squared plus two plus 2 squared plus 2, and I'm not putting in, whoops, plus, I'm not putting the brackets in because these are easy numbers. 3 squared plus 2 plus 4 squared plus 2. Add those all up. So we get 3 plus 6 plus 11 plus 18, which is 9, 20, 30. Now, our next one, this one's a little bit different because it doesn't start at 1. So we've got, this would be 
2 to the 3 plus 2 to the 4 plus 2 to the 5 plus 2 to the 6 equals, and I don't have a calculator with me, but here we go, 2 squared, or sorry, whoops, 2 to the 3. Stalling here, stalling. 120. I guess I could have done that in my head probably faster, but that's okay. Here we go. And the last question here for this section is write this sequence using sigma notation. So <clears throat> what we need to do is figure out what's our actual notation. What's our how are we finding all of our terms? Okay, so looking at the last one, it was just two to some value gave us each term. Well, this one, our a value, so we have tn, a plus n minus one t. Uh, we're gonna get tn equals two. Our difference is positive eight, so we've got plus n minus one times eight. So we get tn equals, um, let's make it 8n minus 6. Okay, so for sigma notation, we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 terms. So write that out. i equals 1. So going to 6, we would have... And remember, if you're writing this as an i, you can change it to n if you want. If you're writing it to i, it's going to be 8i, whoop, not plus, 8i minus 6. There you go. All right. Now, looking at convergent series and sum to infinity, what this means is that we're going to look at the values of a series if we were to take it all the way to infinity. Now, if we look at these kind of investigations of this geometric series, you did one divided by two to find out your R value. Here, you're gonna get an R value of 0.5. The next one, 30 divided by 75, if we reduce that all the way down, you're gonna get R equals what? Six over 25, which is 0.24. Here, we're gonna get negative 0.25. Now, if I were to go through and find these values, you can plug them into the formula if you want. Remember, it's a geometric series. So we've got A equals, or sorry, SN equals A times R to the N, then going back down, minus 1 divided by R minus 1. We get, this is equal to 3.996. This is equal to 3.9999. This is equal to 3.9999496, okay? We, we're gonna start to notice something about these ones. This one, I'm gonna only take these to three decimals. All of these ones actually happen to be the same answer. And then if we look at the next one, they're actually the same again. They're all 192.000, What do you notice about these? Well, what you should notice is as we get bigger, they get closer to some number. This, probably here, the first one, getting closer to four. This getting closer to 98.685. Probably can't see it because there's numbers bigger there. This one, it's actually getting closer to 192. Okay, now these numbers are going down, but it's getting closer and closer to 192. All right, if we were at S50, well, you probably get four. 
198.685 and 192. Do we think this is accurate value? Why or why not? I want you to think about that yourself. We'll talk about it tomorrow, but I want you to go over that yourself. Okay? When we're looking at these, these examples or these are all examples of convergent series. These types of series occur when our R value is between negative 1 and 1, so when we are getting smaller. Okay, so the differences between these decreases as n increases. This means as you add more terms, the value of the sum changes very little. The sum is actually approaching a constant number. Okay, so what this actually means is when we're looking at this formula, so the sum of the terms is that, and remember the other textbooks use u as your first letter, so I did that here. As n gets very large, or approaches infinity, so it gets super big, if we have all of this, this is like saying, this is the important part, our sum is going to be u times 1 over 1 minus u. So really, we have a, our starting term, divided by 1 minus r. Excuse me, I said 1 minus u. Okay, so as our term goes to infinity, if our r is smaller than 1, but greater than negative 1, this is going to happen. So, in future courses, you'd write this like a limit. That's actually the first part of calculus. But, we're just going to say that this is what we'll look at. Okay, so we've got that written down there. Um, the convergence series value is just going to be written as s as it approaches infinity. We've got, this can be a as well, over 1 minus r. That's the sum to infinity. All right. So if we look at this one, I'm not going to find out s10 and s15. What I'm going to do is just find out s infinity for you. You guys can do the other ones if you really want to. We've got s infinity equals, and it's going to be our a value, which is 18, divided by 1 minus r. Oops, I should have made, maybe figured out what r was first. r for this one is going to be 1 third. So we've got 18 divided by 1 minus r is negative 2 thirds. Right. And so when we do that, you're going to get 18 divided by negative 2 thirds. It's going to be negative 27. Okay. Looking at the next example, the sum of the first three terms of a geometric sequence is 148, and the sum to infinity is 256. Find the first term, the common ratio of the series. Do this on the back of this sheet. I'm going to get you to try this on your own. I want you to work on it. I know it's difficult. Use what we've done before. You guys should be able to do this. This is something that I would expect you to, this would be like an advanced question on a test. I wouldn't necessarily show it to you before, but you have all of the information to do this yourself. Okay, and then there is a worksheet to finish up with.